This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 872. How much protein do you need to build muscle, lose fat, and maintain an aesthetic body? Part two, by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com, and I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy Tuesday, and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. I cover fitness, nutrition, stress management, weight management, and lots more, just like an audiobook, but from a bunch of different authors, and always with permission from the sites. And thank you to sizzlefish.com for sponsoring this episode. A lot of grocery stores don't source top quality seafood responsibly, but sizzlefish.com delivers pure natural seafood responsibly right to my door with fast and free shipping. They have everything from shrimp to calamari, sea bass, salmon, and a lot more. If you are interested in great tasting, healthy fish and seafood, check out sizzlefish.com today. Plus, as an exclusive deal for being a listener, you can use discount code OHD for 10% off your first order. That's discount code OHD for 10% off your first order. Now, today's post is part two from yesterday. So if you're new here or skipping around, I'd recommend listening to yesterday's episode first. That's episode 871. But If you're all caught up, let's jump right in and hear part two and continue optimizing your life. How much protein do you need to build muscle, lose fat, and maintain an aesthetic body? Part two by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com. Protein quality and amino acid profile. Most animal protein sources are good choices because they contain all of the nine essential amino acids. In fact, Lane Norton has mentioned multiple times that leucine plays a major role in muscle protein synthesis. Consuming foods like dairy contain ample amounts of leucine in addition to the other necessary amino acids. The good news is you're probably meeting all your amino acid requirements if you're consuming foods from various sources, so it's not worth worrying too much over. If you're a vegetarian or vegan, you just wanna make sure you're eating a well-rounded diet. One thing I want to mention that isn't talked about much when discussing protein needs for individuals, especially those of us wanting to gain more muscle and lose more fat, and that concept is eating nose to tail. This idea comes from consuming all parts of the animal, not just the muscle meat. When you go to the supermarket to pick up some animal protein, you mostly grab chicken breast or chicken thighs, turkey, cuts of beef, and fish fillets. These protein sources are muscle meats, which are heavy in the amino acid tryptophan, which is good for growing bodies and definitely a great option for those who want to improve their body composition. But what about all the other cuts of meat that you might not see in traditional supermarkets like pig feet, chicken feet, marrow bones, oxtail, or tendons? Something many haven't considered is the collagen content of the animals they're eating. Collagen, when cooked, like in bone broths or head cheeses, is known as gelatin. Gelatin can make up 50% of the total animal protein, but most of us in the West and other industrialized nations focus our attention on eating the muscle meats. Certain amino acids such as glycine are high in gelatinous cuts of meat and very low in muscle meats. Since our bodies are made up of the proteins we eat, including collagen in your daily intake might have a positive effect on your joints and connective tissues and their repair. It's even believed that degenerative and inflammatory diseases can be positively impacted by incorporating more gelatin into the diet. So what does this have to do with total protein intake? Simply put, you might want to think about incorporating some type of gelatin into your meals either through supplementation or eating more gelatinous cuts of meat or even making bone broth. In general, since I eat a good amount of muscle meat, I try to have one to two servings of bone broth, tendon, or collagen hydrosylate, which dissolves easier in liquids than pure gelatin powder in my daily meals. What about protein requirements and meal timing? Meal timing is one of those things that probably doesn't matter as much when you're getting sufficient amounts of protein daily. However, your individual goals may change this. In a recent Physique Science Radio podcast on protein, Lane Norton and Sohee Lee interviewed protein researcher Donald Lehman, and here are my notes from the show. Around minute 13, here's what I noted. If you're aiming for maximal muscle mass accrual and eating a caloric surplus to gain weight, you probably want to avoid any type of long bouts of fasting, meaning anything longer than 12 hours. At minute 40, I noted that 
four to five meals per day with your protein target spread out evenly would be ideal. And for muscle retention and fat loss, two to three meals with your protein target spread out evenly is fine. So here's an example. Let's say you weigh 180 pounds and want to gain the maximum amount of muscle possible. You need to split up your recommended protein into four to five servings each day. For four meals each day, that would be 180 divided by four. That equals 45 grams. So you'd aim for 45 grams of protein in each meal. For five meals per day, it'd be 180 divided by five. This equals 36 grams. So in this case, you'd aim for 36 grams of protein per meal. Ideally, these meals would be spaced out fairly evenly, but you don't need to be super rigid with it. Actually, hitting protein numbers while living your life and not stressing about it is far more important than worrying about hitting exactly the same amount of protein within each meal. The same math applies to fat loss and the two to three meal idea. You just listened to part two of the post titled, How Much Protein Do You Need to Build Muscle, Lose Fat, and Maintain an Aesthetic Body? by JC Dean of jcdfitness.com. And thank you again to sizzlefish.com for sponsoring this episode. Perfect if you're looking to increase your omega-3 intake. You've heard the SMASHED acronym here on this show before and know that seafood is important. Health experts recommend two or more servings of fish and seafood every week. Yet, it's been reported that nearly 90% of Americans aren't eating enough seafood. You can purchase items from sizzlefish.com whenever you want or choose to receive a subscription box each month so you don't forget. Sizzlefish.com delivers pure, natural seafood responsibly right to my door with fast and free shipping, and the pricing is actually reasonable. They have everything from shrimp to calamari, sea bass, salmon, and a lot more. If you're interested in great-tasting, healthy fish and seafood, check out sizzlefish.com today. Plus, as an exclusive deal for being a listener, you can use discount code OHD for 10% off your first order. That's discount code OHD for 10% off your first order. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. I was talking about this yesterday. When I was at my nutrition conference last month, I went to a session on protein timing. And there was this theory about whether there's this anabolic window, meaning are there certain times of the day when we should be consuming protein to help build muscle. In the past, I'd been using the American College of Sports Medicine's recommendations to consume 20 grams of leucine-rich protein about 30 minutes, within 30 minutes, of completing your workout. Leucine-rich proteins would, of course, be anything that came from an animal, so that would be, of course, your meat, your poultry, your eggs, dairy, that counts too. But leucine is also found in many plant-based products like beans, nuts, and seeds. But at the conference I attended, the researcher was explaining that that may not be as important as we once thought. Don't you just love how nutrition research changes what seems like on a daily basis? The researcher was explaining that there may be this window, it's possible, but in his research, he's realizing that how you consume your protein over the course of the day may be most important, and that we may not need to stress so much about making sure we get those 20 grams of proteins in immediately or within 30 minutes after our workout. So here's the takeaway then. The thing we need to think about is our overall diet quality. Are we consuming well-rounded meals with at least five to nine combined servings of fruits and vegetables each day, some protein each day coming from various sources, maybe not just animal products, but plant-based sources as well, and are we feeling our best? Because it seems like after that, the body seems to take it from there and knows what to do. All right, that's enough out of me. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening every day. Hope you're having a wonderful week so far, and I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.